Looking at buying a CNC router or a laser engraver can be kind of confusing. I know, I own four laser engravers and nine CNC routers. And to me, they fit totally different people. So in this video, I'm gonna be talking about what I've learned throughout the years of growing a multi-million dollar business using laser engravers and CNC routers. This is not a super technical video. It's more about what the heck they're good for and what they're not so good for. Let's get right into it. So let's start out in the shop with CNC routers because this is where I originally got started and it wasn't until I had three CNC routers that I bought my very first laser engraver. But this is where I realized the biggest difference between the two of them. A CNC router creates value and a laser engraver only adds value. Now this is the most important thing you can conceptualize and really grasp between these two machines. If you are a CNC operator, this is your playground. You can make so many different things from this. You can do inlays, you can do trays, spoons, spatulas. You can do all kind of crazy stuff, which is taking this piece of wood or this piece of wood right here that's worth maybe six, seven dollars and turning it into something of a much higher value, right? Literally turning a seven dollar product into a possible thirty dollar product. With lasers, the huge difference is you can only typically engrave or cut thin stuff. And so now you can engrave and add a marginal value to the product, but not an exponential value. Think of this hat right here. A laser engraver added value to the hat. The hat still has value before you put a leather, pa leather patch on it, but once you engrave the leather patch with a laser, which we make these in-house, and put it on a hat, the hat becomes from a $10 hat to a $25 hat because the laser added value. And so if you just understand those two basic concepts, this is gonna make this video so much better and really start transforming your thought process on what you think of these two machines. Now, let's go to the next point. So the next concept is bigger isn't always better and more expensive isn't always better. So I talk about this a lot with CNC routers, but the same is going to apply with laser engravers. So this, these two lasers right here are both four foot by three foot, both 120 watt, and both cost me $45,000. And these are the first two lasers I bought when I didn't know much about them. Why I say bigger isn't always better is I bought these for a purpose and they were going to cut acrylic for me and I needed this wide format but I see so many people getting into it where they wanna buy this really expensive laser or get this really wide format one, but they only wanna engrave like cutting boards, right? Well, it kinda of works the same as a CNC, right? You, you may not need a super massive laser because this thing has an operating cost and because it's so expensive, you know, I don't do certain products in here and I use them on other, later, other lasers that are not as pricey. So when you're looking at lasers, specifically CO2 lasers, understand that like, just like a router and a spindle is the power of a CNC, well then the wattage is the power of a laser. And so can a lower wattage laser do the same as a higher wattage? Yes, but a heck of a lot slower, just like a really underpowered CNC can only go so fast, but at the same time, it's okay, right? If, you, if it's not running 40 hours a week, you don't need a bigger one or a faster one or a more expensive one. So let me go show you where I learned the more expensive lesson at. So over here is the newest laser that I got, and it's a Thunder laser. And I transitioned from those epilogues now to a Thunder. And the reason I did is because the Thunder was less than half the cost. Secondly, this 130 watt laser is going to cut just as fast as those. And so you always have to be thinking about the purpose. Now this one's really big because we stick a full sheet of this plywood in here and actually cut stuff out. But over here, I have a much smaller laser, and this is before I transitioned over to Thunder, but it only engraves cups for us. And so I didn't need a big expensive laser, I just need this laser right here to engrave cups all day long for our company. And so I bought this one. So whenever you're looking at lasers and trying to conceptualize this, I understand what the use is for, 
what size I need and I don't try to go above that. Now I didn't necessarily make that mistake with those first two lasers. I actually did need them that size and that speed. But as my business grew and evolved, I realized those were kind of an overkill and not necessary and something smaller and something a lot more economical is going to do the same amount of, create the same amount of value for me as those other ones at a lot less cost. I have probably four laser engraving companies a day want me to do a full video and say, this laser right here is the best laser engraver ever, you should buy it. But my channel's not bought, I do not do that. I just want y'all guys to go to CSE Workshop, check out the CNC bits and different materials that we have. And we do carry eighth inch and quarter inch Baltic birch. So if you do already own a laser and wanna make some different stuff with it, check that out on CSE Workshop as well. And guys, don't forget to like and subscribe if you are getting value from this video. And that brings me to the next point, which is a laser engraver fits a totally different type of personality than a CNC router. So whenever I think of people that operate a CNC router, you're a little bit more of a craftsman. You like to work with your hands a lot more. You might have a little bit of an engineering mind. You think in kind of terms of black and white a lot because there's numbers, there's G code. There's all those sexy things that engineers like that are boring as crap, but they're also fun to our CNC guys, right? When I think of laser engravers, I think of artsy fartsy, type of people, right? And so like, this is a cup that we do, right? We engrave on it, we add the value to the cup. The laser can never make the cup, but it can definitely add value to the cup. So that's one, we do hats over here. So this is more artsy type stuff. Why? Because a laser can pretty much engrave on anything, right? CO2 lasers can engrave on everything but metal. Diode lasers can do glass a little bit better. Fiber lasers do metal, but in, in theory, collectively, lasers can pretty much engrave on everything and add value to almost everything. Now, when you talk about cutting and different stuff like that, that's a different story, but typically, you're going to get very artsy with this engraving cups and mugs and cutting cardboard and, and, and doing felt and all that other stuff, where, whereas a CNC-minded person is going to look at what bits they can use to cut wood or cut plastic, um, cut aluminum, right? Those types of things. And we're making dust, laser engravers are making smoke or fumes. Two different types of personalities. But you can tell I lean more towards the CNC personality because I'm not very artsy and, and I don't think in terms of color, I think in terms of black and white and flatness. So that's why I love CNC. That brings me to the next point. Now you may be thinking at this point in the video, Ryan, I'm not looking at a four foot by three foot laser. I'm not even looking at one this big. I want the little one that I can set down. It's like 300 bucks and it engraves, you know, whatever the heck I put it over the top of. Or I just want a little one to attach on my CNC. Here's another difference that I've realized over the years is that a laser has a lot lower barrier to entry, right? Lasers are becoming cheaper than ever. They're more accessible than ever. They're so cheap. They're such a low barrier to entry. And honestly, they're really easy to learn. So why should you ever own a CNC router? Well, because lasers are so accessible, because they're so easy to learn, because everybody's buying them, a CNC router always puts you on that island because you do have to learn about feed rates. You do have to learn about the different bits. You do have to understand that plywood cuts different than walnut that cuts different than pine, right? You have to understand all that, which is harder. And most people don't like hard, they want easy. And most people that want easy don't really work out over a long time horizon. And so understand that because you're seeing so much laser stuff, because they're so accessible, I gravitate away from that, and it's kind of like a magnet, right? I gravitate away from that, and I want to move towards the harder thing. Now, it's probably my biggest vice is I like difficult things, but that does set you apart because I can count on one hand the people that I know that can properly use a CNC router before I ever made cutting it close, but I knew hundreds of people that have laser engravers that are adding value in forms of trinkets and leathers and pins and pencils and all that good stuff. 
Now the best of both worlds is combining a CNC with a laser engraver. And that's where things start getting interesting, right? Where you combine two different machining mediums together. And so you combine an easy thing that everybody's getting into with a difficult thing that nobody knows how to do and is very difficult. And that's why you watch this channel. And when you mesh those two together, beautiful things happen. And if you are that kind of person that can think in terms of colors and trinkets and all of that and combine them with CNC, you're doing really well. But that's just something I learned throughout all of these years. So should you buy a CNC router or should you buy a laser? Well, if you're doing it for a hobby, do whatever one makes you the most happiest. If you are more art, art oriented, you wanna get the laser. And if you're more engineering minded, you wanna get the CNC router. But if you're doing it for money, you need to figure out the purpose behind the purchase before you ever buy it. So to reiterate this, this Thunder laser right here, we got because it's only doing thank you cards for us. And so we bought this big machine to engrave a couple cutting boards, stuff like that. But its main purpose is we stick this sheet in here and it cuts out thank you cards for customers of cutting it close. That's it. That is its purpose. And it does it very well. It's a highly tuned, well-oiled machine and it cuts out thank you cards all day long, spitting them out. It'll do some leather for us for our hats and stuff like that. But its main purpose is the thank you cards. This laser right here, its main purpose, the way it was gonna pay itself off is engraving cups. We didn't get it for any other purpose. If it does anything else, great, but that is its purpose. When I, and follow me this way, whenever I first got my CNC, its first purpose initially was to do inlaid cutting boards. That was it. And that's how it was gonna pay itself off. So then as that business grew and grew, I ended up buying these two lasers. And the purpose behind these two lasers Laser one was to just cut out acrylic for these piggy banks, right? My CNC was creating the value by taking oak and pocketing it out and making the form. The CNC was adding value by cutting out the acrylic faster than my CNC could. And then this laser was engraving the piggy banks and that was its purpose, right? And that's why we bought them so big because we can stick 12 of them in there at a time. And then now they do a lot of cutting boards and we can probably get away with a smaller laser, but we can stack multiple cutting boards in there at a time just to engrave. And so whenever you're looking at, man, should I buy a laser? Should I buy a CNC? You have to really conceptualize the purpose. Like, am I at the point where I can just add value to a product? Or am I at the point where I need to create value from nothing, right? A, a piece of wood, a piece of plastic, whatever. And then the laser is going to add value in the form of personalization, in the form of a little chart, whatever you want to laser, right? That's the main thing you got to figure out. And I don't have an easy answer for that, right? I like to start with CNCs because I knew how to create value from a product and I wasn't artsy fartsy enough to figure out how to add the value only in form of personalization, which at the time my CNC could just engrave everything itself and I didn't need the laser. But when I went over to acrylic, I needed the laser to add the value to the product that the CNC created the value from. So I hope this video really starts getting you to think differently about CNC routers and lasers. I hope you left this video with more knowledge than when you started. And as always guys, remember, if you ain't cutting it close, you ain't cutting it right.